Hi everybody, I'm meteorologist Joe Chaffee. This is the snow cover growth over Eurasia, or what we refer to as Siberian snow cover growth. And it is from October 1st through October 24th. And you can see that the snow cover has expanded across much of the east, the, uh, west, the eastern half of Siberia. And toward the last few days, you start to see a little bit growth on the western and southern flanks. The other thing that's been noticeable if you see the area in yellow, that is the sea ice extent, which was at uh, near record lows going through the middle of September. And you can notice over the last number of days how that is now extended over to the uh, northern coast of Siberia, although it still remains open as you go eastward toward uh, the Bering Straits and Alaska. And it looks like the ice isn't quite just beginning now to freeze along the north shores of Alaska over into southern Canada. We're still going to have to wait to see how this measures up to past years. Uh, we'll know in another seven or eight days. Uh, we'll look at the indices and we'll compare them. Uh, right now, uh, as of the mid middle part of the month, the snow cover growth was growing pretty rapidly, but it was growing at a slower rate than it, what, what it was in the prior two winters. And the implication is that the faster the rate of snow cover growth has a, a direct impact on uh, what kind of winters we have in the Northeast. Rapid snow cover growth off the charts would mean that we would have a, a, a harsh winter. If the snow gro cover growth rate is lower than average, then we would not have a harsh winter. It's just one of many indicators that we're going to be looking at over the next couple of weeks.